Claflin University has been the choice of thousands of students to help them prepare for a life of success and to realize their dreams. Claflin has an amazing reputation of preparing a workforce here in the South Carolina region and globally. We know that your experience here at Claflin will be transformational. The university has many articulation agreements with international institutions of higher education. Consider Claflin University as your choice because the world needs visionaries. Like us on Facebook. I liked. I liked it on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Insights. Yeah. Two eyes in the middle. I-N-S-I-I-G-H-T-S. All right, y'all. Like us on Facebook. I liked. I liked it on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Insights. Yeah. Two eyes in the middle. I-N-S-I-I-G-H-T-S. All right, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mickey Clayton. The coach, and here with the Claflin Athletic Show, and with the legend women's basketball coach Terrence Jenkins to start off the new year. Coach, welcome to the show. Yes, sir. How you doing? Thanks for having me again. Always good to be with you on a good rainy Tuesday morning. <laughs> oh, I know that's right. It, it here in Florida is storming. So we got a tornado watch and everything else. So we're going to hope that we could get this through without power going out. It's going out all over the city. Okay. Uh, Coach, tell me, you you are uh, uh, two and one in the new year. Is that is that correct? Two and one in the new year. You know, uh, just been talking to some of my mentors and uh, some of my uh, colleagues. And, of course, we dropped another home conference game and, that's always tough. Like I'm telling my team, like we cannot afford to drop conference, home conference games. And if, if, uh, unfortunately, we, you know, we want to be three and zero at this point, but we were two and one better off than some teams. So, hey, uh, uh, we kind of the last couple of days we got away from it a little, and uh, we expected to get back at it today, but we weren't able to get back at it today. But uh, we got two more non-conference games that we expect to uh, win big and then get get ready for the South. You know, we didn't do as expected against the North teams, but, hey, we live to see another day, and we expect to get it right. Well, Coach, you know, as a, as a former coach, we know that we, we never are pleased with what we're doing. I mean, even when we're 3-0, and you know, we, we, we don't like the turnovers or we don't like the free throw percentage, so we keep raising the bar for our teams to be able to to get to that bar and, and push themselves a little more. What was your biggest challenge coming out of the Christmas break? Because you've gotten off to a pretty good start, but, you know, I always admire those programs that come back after they have a, a big break after the season started and have to come back and get everybody back in condition and everything. So what were some of the challenges that, that you faced and how did your team handle those challenges? The biggest key is we came back. Uh, everybody got back after the winter break, you know, safe and sound, after, you know, getting away and hitting the reset button. And my biggest message was, hey, at the end of the, end of, end of the day, we're not, we're not a four and six team. And so we felt like, hey, we dropped some games, we should have won. And, you know, we won some games that we shouldn't have won. And so at this point, let's make sure that we all rededicate ourselves and we're on a mission. And the mission is not complete with the end of the first semester ending in December. Now we're on a new slate. Everybody is zero and zero. And let's start a new slate because at the end of the day, we're not where we want to be, but we're not where we used to be. Okay. Okay. From when I saw you earlier in the season at homecoming, I remember somebody saying, even though that was a closely contested game that you did not win, the comments were, this team doesn't quit. They they kind of fight through it. They said there have been some other teams that, that would have folded, but this one didn't. They kept fighting. Um, would you agree that your, your young ladies do that, Coach? Man, that's one thing that we be hanging our head on. Even through that little storm from uh, playing at home where we were losing a lot of home games, like their spirit and their approach to the game has always been 100. And, I, and as a coach, even when you're going through that, you know, that little tough storm of the schedule, like you always want to know the morale of the team. 
and I will say something about this team, like the morale is always on a hundred. Like they always got good positive vibes, you know, you know, they always got, you know, they always preaching sisterhood and togetherness. And so I I just deep down, you know, like most coaches think, we gonna get this thing on track and it's gonna be very, very soon. And you know, I'm excited. Uh, uh coach, that that's that is nothing to be minimized. That team morale and the team being together like that. We we know from coaching that a lot of times it's the internal things that can really destroy the program. Ooh, but if they fight together, you can pretty much overcome any adversity. Absolutely. Who have your leaders been for you, Coach? Right now, you know, I, I have uh, Jasmine Jeffries, our starting point guard. She's been stepping up real vocally. You know, I've been putting a lot of pressure on her. Like I always tell her, you the quarterback, so you definitely can't. You an extension of me and Coach Mike, and so she's been, you know, you know, accepting the challenge and been doing a good job with Lauren Scott, one of my returns from last year. Naya Morris also, you know, those are my two lot, two top scores, and you know they are introverts, but I have been preaching and pushing and you know keep teaching like, hey, at the end of the day, you may be an introvert, but your skill set make allows you to have a voice, so you need to speak up, and they've been doing a good job of it. Okay, those are are your two leading scores. How has Jasmine been doing? She's been has she playing at the tempo that you wanted to see? Yeah, the biggest thing with Jasmine, you know, she's coming from um, um, junior college where they won a lot of games, and she had the ball in her hands a lot. And so the biggest key uh, with her these last couple weeks coming back, I've been telling her, hey, at the end of the day, we don't need you to break the press by yourself. You can kick it up to your scores and let's get it, let's get in the open court and get easy baskets. So she's been, you know, doing that, and um, and she was leading. The, I, I I wasn't aware, but Coach Mike told me she was leading the conference in assists. Mm-hmm. And so. Uh, my biggest thing to her the last couple of weeks is continue to share the ball, but sometimes just give it up early and you still get the assist. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, you know, let's get the ball out your hand. If we need to pull it back out to get into a set, we will. But we don't have to. If, you know, the defense allows to get an easy two or a quick open three for a great shooter like Lauren Scott or Naya Morris and, you know, Janelle Sample, hey, that's all good as well, too. Yeah, but one thing for sure, Lauren can shoot it. That that's your uh, three point specialist there, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. She's in the gym right now. Of course, there's a storm outside, but she's you know she's been texting me all morning and saying, "Coach, hey, I know we won't have practice and we can't have practice, but I need to get some shots up." And so that's all you want as a coach, you know, a, a young lady, you know, or your or your, um, your young student athlete willing to put the work in because you know, like I always tell them, work is work. You know, we always talk about you no. Know, you're always thinking it's going to get easier, but it's going to be harder before it gets easier. And so I always want the young ladies to know that you have to put the work in. Yes, sir. And and that young lady right there, she shoots it. I mean, she's right about 43% from the from the three for you. you know? Absolutely. And that's one thing I've been preaching to her as well. Like, don't just wait. Don't try to get all your shots within the offense. Like, move without the basketball. And so that's something that she's been working on and getting to the basket a whole lot more as well because coming down the scratch, we don't want the Scott Report just to be just, you know, a shooter. Like, you know, you need to move out the basketball and create your own shot as well with um, within the offense. Is she as aggressive as you wanted to be with the ball, Coach? At times she is, you know, she's getting better. You know, she does a good job of trying to, you know, come off screens a whole lot more aggressive. If she don't have it, she'll kick it back and then, you know, run off another screen. So she's doing a better job of that lately. Would you say that it's difficult or fairly easy? I have my own answer, but in terms of getting the the players on your team to play to their strengths, Yes, at times. Yes, yes. You know, the biggest key is, you know, they, these young athletes, they want to see the success early and fast and quickly. And you have to keep coaching and motivating them and tell them sometimes it's a process. You know, you're not going to see the product, you know, the same day Coach T told you about it and then you go out there and try to demonstrate it. You may not get the results you want that day. 
that Coach T won't that day, but you gotta keep at it, work at it, work at it, and then you'll see it, you'll see it prosper at the end. And so that's one thing that her and a lot of the other young ladies that we challenge a lot, and they are seeing their fruit, you know, uh, bloom. Well, you came over from the men's side, and I'm gonna ask you another question. Um, who do you think responds better to the coaching, the the, the men's team or the women? You tried to get me in trouble, Coach. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Because <laughs> you, 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 you have uh, sat in the same seat as you know, as myself, and so to answer your question, oh, uh, that's a tough one. Um, I would say, uh, you know, being on the men's side so long, hearing about the women's side, they always say, "Hey, what's the young ladies believe in you? They'll uh, they'll buy in. They'll run through a wall for you." And I think the guys will too. So, so keep it safe and tell the, the total truth to your uh to your question, Mr. Clayton, is one thing about this generation overall, I think on the men and the women, they don't really care how much you know. They don't care how much basketball you know. They want to know how much you care. That's when they'll buy into you. That's on both ends. Coach, that was. Uh, are you running for uh, city councilman in Orangeburg? Because that was a, that was an excellent political response. <laughs> and, and see, I ask you that, Coach, because they they ask me that all the time. Uh huh. And my own thought was okay. Was that I thought that the women's team listened uh -huh. more, and you could emphasize fundamentals because they wanted to get better in that way. The yeah. guys tend to think that they already knew, so. It was a more difficult sell for them. You know, the young ladies will learn how to do left, right hand. They'll try to get the defensive uh, pressure that you want, move their feet. The guys think they're quick enough to reach around and knock the ball away. You know, the athleticism comes in effect. You, you're right. The athleticism come in where guys feel like they're stronger, which, you know, most guys are going to be stronger. They're going to be quicker. They're going to be faster. They're going to be more athletic. So they feel like they can do the shortcuts. Where most young ladies, if they are, athletic and male skill, they still will buy into what you're selling and try to take the one, two, three, four, where the guy's going to take one, three, five, seven, ten. You know, so I do understand that. See, I, I got you to expound a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, and the other thing I thought was for the guys, they tend to, basketball is their identity. And it's a part of who they are. I mean, they just, they would play every day if they Absolutely. weren't playing for the basketball team. And the young ladies who are your better athletes have that same thought ideology. They're in the gym. They're gym rats. You know, a lot of young ladies, when they're not in practice, they're doing social activities. So, Absolutely. It, and that kind of that, that kind of has something to do with their development as a player because it's so important to them yeah. that they work at it to perfect it. Absolutely. And the guys, they, they, we think we're going to play for health. When the young ladies, like you say, they're going to be doing some social stuff, life after college, and they understand, like, it's not that many outlets for women's basketball like it is for men. And, and on the other terms of it, not a lot of women want to leave home. Like, guys, we'll leave and go to Europe and Italy, you know, to test the water. Young ladies say, hey, let me go make this money. Let me get my career started and, you know, go on with my life. Basketball be good to me. So it's time for me to move on. And see, part of that goes back to an argument that we have as coaches a lot of time would have to do with men and women and the, the fact that women think further ahead than we do. You know, men tend to think for the day and women think for tomorrow and down the road, which always puts them strategically at an advantage. That's why they're so much better prepared uh, typically when they leave school because it, it has been their plan what they were going to do and being a former player, you know, I'm thinking about the day. I'm going down to play today. But yeah, exactly. Where we have that senior itis where I'll see you as a, as a young man. We thinking like, oh, man, this game you're in the end. What am I going to do? We panicking. When the young lady say, hey, I've been, I've been waiting for this moment. I'm good. <laughs> like, right. I'm going to play this season. We, I want to win. But at the end of the day, I'm going to get this degree. And I'm on to the next, whether it's right. the masters or going to my field, you know, going to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and that's a plus. That's a good thing that that, that yeah, generally absolutely. the women think a little bit further ahead, like than us. 
And I had that same conversation with my, my, my wife. By the time I decide to do something, she already has a plan on what I was going to do anyway. So, Absolutely. <laughs> well, Coach, tell me, you got the season and then it's rolling. I mean, this thing is going by fast, and you yeah. can't look too far ahead, but you got a pretty good road stretch coming up here soon, don't you? Absolutely, I do. Uh, so uh, we try to, you know, take care of home where we haven't been doing. Where I, you know, I'm feeling, <laughs> you know, I'm feeling really good about uh, this upcoming game on Thursday. Cross rivalry gonna give us a chance to go against a team that's, you know, about 35, 40 miles away, and give us a good Division Two win, and then we go on the road to play uh, a young Morris team that we played early in the year, who's not gonna be the same, which we are not the same. And then we got two more home conference games where we need to get off to a good start. And then we go on the road to battle some good CIAA teams on the road, which I think we'll be ready for. Okay, yeah, you got uh, Benedict coming up. And uh, that's that arch rival game that you're talking about. Then Morris on our HBCU MLK Invitational. Absolutely. You know, so, so Coach, what do you do traveling – outside of just basketball? Because I know you do some team bonding activities and you're doing study hall on the road. Um, what are you doing with your young ladies uh, traditionally when you travel that kind of gets their mind off of it and gets them a chance to learn about the areas that they're traveling to? Yes, we definitely try to do that all the time, especially when we go up to the Bowie area. This year, we was unfortunately, they came to us. So we weren't able to go to Bowie and Phil, uh, Lincoln like we usually have a time in, you know, Mr. Tio and Miss Lee, they do a good job of allowing us to, uh, you know, let the young ladies and even the young men go to the uh, African American amusement park in uh, in DC and stuff like that. Some stuff that they would never think about visiting on their own. So we always try to, you know, make it a business trip. We always talk about a business trip not only just about basketball. We kind of get away and just try to learn about different uh, other culturals and our background and stuff like that. And, you know, we are, sometimes we do go step to the mall and just do a walkthrough at the mall and just try to get our mind away from it. Because, you know, as we both know, mental health is really, really big. And that's why I was just so excited for us to get that win on last Saturday and to get to Sunday where we was able to just get a day off told my young ladies, just get away from the game, man. When we're on the road, we definitely try to do that a lot. We try to get our work in, but at the same time, we try to do stuff on the road that get their mind off it and, it's, you know, let them know it's bigger than just basketball. Okay, okay. Coach, um, defensively, I noticed that your team plays with a lot of heart. A little, and, and they play hard. They play harder than what you did last year. What is the difference in, in terms of the effort that they're giving you? Well, the biggest key is I got three freshmen and I got and I brought in six transfers where they've never been taught the details and the the day to day of a help defense. So they're really excited to learn and try to you know, demonstrate everything me and Coach Mike pointing to them. And so they're trying to buy in each and every day. There's still a work in progress, but at the end of the day, they're taking pride into it. And we tell them all the time, defense and rebound is about guts. You know, it's about, you know, the wheel. And so the biggest key is those transfers and those freshmen, along with the returners, they are trying to understand, like, hey, if we can stop somebody day in and day and, and, and Every every night in and night out, like we're gonna be really good night in and night out to win a lot of ball games. Now, uh, Coach Mike might you know beg the difference where he feel like, hey, we're gonna let some teams score a lot of points that shouldn't score a lot of points, but at the same time, the young ladies are playing hard and they're trying to buy into what we are selling on defense and on offense, and it's gonna pay off at the end. We're gonna definitely, uh get a good run at the end. It's all, all about not how you start sometimes, it's about how you finish. And I'm really, 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 by the time we get, I come back on your show, we're going to be singing a different tune. Okay. Okay. I, I, Coach, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. Now, we talked about Lauren. We talked about um, Jasmine. Tell me about your, uh, Naya. I, I see that uh, she's getting a lot of minutes for you. She's getting some shots up, shooting at a 48% clip. Uh, Three-point shooting is not her strength, but 
what is she doing that's that's getting her to score at the rate that she's doing? Man, I told her she can dominate the game on both ends of the floor with her athletic ability and her scoring ability. Man, she can you know she can go out there and get four or five steals, and that's eight ten points by itself from the defensive aspect of the game. And offensively, we just told, I just told her she can play with more energy. And once she's once her energy is at a, at a high, the team feeds off that, and she's doing a good job of just you know bringing that energy and practice in the games, and the team feeding off that because she's one of our leading scorers, not not only on the court but off the court. And so, uh, with that being said, she's doing a good job with it, you know, uh, and the team buying off, feeding off of. Okay, and um, who do you have in the backup point guard position? I, I know yeah, it's but, critical uh, to have another guard in there. So, so who else you have that's, that's helping you out in that? Have two freshmen, man. They, they, I have seen them grow since stepping on campus. Uh, uh, they call it Tootie Floyd and uh, Kennedy Rivers. They're doing a really good job. Two freshmen. One's from Charleston, South Carolina, and one from Columbia, South Carolina. And Tootie is more of a um, combo, and Kennedy is more of the traditional point guard. And so they're they are learning under Jasmine. Jasmine put a lot of pressure on them in practice, so they'll it'll kind of carry over the game. And they're doing a good job of even with their body language and understanding what we want from them on the offense and defense perspective of the game. They're doing a good job of um, translating into games. Okay, I see that you have them, and you have a, a junior, a JUCO point guard. And those two are getting groomed behind them. What are you going to do to get ready for this junior class that you have that will be seniors next year and trying to make sure you get some people in there to groom them uh, for those spots? Because, Coach, you get ready to lose some firepower as seniors next year. Oh, my God. Don't make me think about it, yo. The biggest key is all those seniors except one. Destiny Coleman is the only one that she'll be done done uh, with, after, with co- collegiate activities. But all those seniors can come back for another year. They can. But I'm not, you know, of course, them being young ladies who have 4.0s and 3.9s, they got great GPAs. So I know they got inspiration of going and start their careers. And so, uh, uh, like you say, I don't want to think about it, but it's something to look at. Uh, me and Coach Mike met yesterday talking about the recruiting. So we're looking to bring in uh, another veteran point guard, another junior. So – Kennedy and Tui can learn even more behind them in passing the torch and bring in some scoring power, young and old, junior college. And uh, cause we're trying to build a program. We're not just trying to bring in all junior college kids. We're trying to bring in some young uh, freshmen as well from the wing and, and from the post. We got a good post. I won't reveal it yet, but we got a big post that just a uh, soccer line kid, 6'1", that just committed on last Friday. So, mm-hmm. Uh, we're going in the right direction in building this program the right way. Now, you said something I need you to to elaborate on and go a little bit more in detail. Talk mm-hmm. about some of the great, great, great point averages that you have. Let's talk about some of these young ladies that are outstanding academicians. Tell, tell us about some of them. Man, when I came, first came over, you know, me and Coach Mike laugh about it all the time. When I first came over from the men's side in uh, the – uh, December, you know, the grades was coming out. Of course, the first semester was ending, and I'm looking at the grades, and I'm like, okay, uh, 3.9, 3.8, 4.0, 4.0. So I'm looking at Coach Mike. I'm like, hey, this is a basketball team or a debate team? <laughs> so <laughs> he said, no, nah, man, you know, we are we don't only have good athletes over here. We got good scholar athletes. And so uh, with that being said, you know, in the recruiting uh, trail this summer, you know, I, I will say uh, five of the six uh, transfers that we brought in uh, graduated from junior college. So they came in with an AA. Uh, one was probably one or two classes short. And then uh, one came in with a 4.0. And this semester just ended. She still has a 4.0 at Claflin. So uh, then we got the freshmen that came in. Of course, they came in with uh, high academic standards, and they still was able to keep that. And that's what our team goals, while you asked that, uh, Mr. Clayton, Coach Clayton. Uh, our team goals here at Claflin is all our junior college 
uh, have to come in and they have to have a 2.08 at the end of the first semester. And after our team go, hey, yes, you have to be in State Hall, but you can you can get out of State Hall by having a 2.8. But let's exceed the 2.8 because we don't just do the bare minimum at uh, women's basketball. We, we set a standard. We always go beyond the call of duty. So that was a challenge to our, my junior college uh, athletes um, to get out of State Hall. Now, if you still want to go just for the structure, you can still go. But at the end of the day, that's our team goal. That's win Stay Hall. That's beat Stay Hall. We always want to teach them winning is a lifestyle. So we teach them to win not only on the court, but in life. And so with that being said, all of them um, have exceeded to get out of Stay Hall. And with that said, one or two of them has, have came back to me and said, Coach, I still want to go to Stay Hall, which I have no problem with. Now with the freshmen, um, they have to go a whole year. And so my challenge to them as a team goal is at the end of this semester, at the end of the spring semester come May, my all three of my freshmen that I brought in should be out of State Hall. Now next fall, if you decide you still want to go just for the structure, hey, so be it. But we're going to have a choice. We're going to make our own choice. We're not going to have a demand to say you have to go to State Hall because we fell short. That's not the standard that we are preaching here at Clapham University um, women's basketball. If you meet the requirements, it becomes optional. Absolutely. I like that. Winning is a lifestyle, Coach. You need, you need to put that on a shirt. Absolutely. Coach, did you get ready to go down and, and, and crank it up? We wish you the, uh, a lot of luck, continued success, and um, we'll be there for the pause up at the end of the month. You know, that, I know that that's a big weekend. Was was there last year at that time and able to get in for homecoming this, this year. And um, naturally, it's your season. We'll have you on again. And we hope that you uh, continue to move forward with the young ladies and continue to teach them and let them teach you because, you know, these students keep teaching us stuff as we Absolutely. every day, Coach. Absolutely. Coach, is Thank there anything you'd like to say in closing? Well, thank you for having me. Always great to uh, get an email from Coach Clayton and say, hey, when you're available to be on my show. And so uh, always delighted to be a part of your show. Always good to just talk basketball with a former coach and a colleague and a mentor uh, like yourself. And uh, uh, always uh, uh, excited to come back. You know, and hopefully uh, when we come back, we'll have this thing steamrolling, ready for the tournament, CIWA tournament in Baltimore in the end of February, beginning of March. Uh, Coach, we know been to that CIAA, you know, you don't want that smoke. You better be ready when you go to that. Absolutely. Well, Coach, we wish you much luck and much and continued success, and we look forward to the next time we talk. Thank you. Go Panthers.